my name is Janelle Greger. Hi, and I'm Andrew Rudolph, and we're live here at the Robo Show Preview Show in Orlando Regional 2015. The 2015 FRC game this year is Recycle Rush, and this year it's a bit more complicated with a lot of different ways for teams to get some points. So the game announcer for the Orlando Regional, George Wallace, was nice enough to sit down with us and explain the game a little bit more. So we're going to go see his walkthrough. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're here at the 2015 Orlando Regional. My name is George. I'm your game announcer for the event. Uh, we're here on Thursday after practice matches are over. going to give you a quick tour of the field. We're going to talk a little bit about game strategy, how you expect to see the games being played out this weekend here in Orlando. Let's get started. Recycle Rush is played on a segmented field. Each alliance will stay on their half of the field for the whole game. The game lasts 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The first 15 seconds of the game are what we call the autonomous period. Robots will act according to pre-programmed instructions. After those 15 seconds, the drivers will take control and try to pick up these scoring objects, place them on the platform and on the step for points. Alliances earn eight points if all three green containers end autonomous period in the autonomous zone. All three yellow totes in the autonomous zone are worth six points for the Alliance. Stacking those three yellow totes are worth a whopping 20 points for that Alliance. After autonomous, teams will attempt to place the yellow totes on the center step to earn a cooperation bonus. Four totes placed on the center step are worth 20 points for both alliances. Four totes stacked on the center step are worth a whopping 40 point bonus for both alliances. Gray totes scored on our scoring platforms are worth two points apiece. Teams will attempt to stack these totes up to six high while on the scoring platforms. Teams will then try to collect these green containers and place them on top of the stacks of totes. A container on top of a stack of totes is worth four points for every tote level underneath it. Some teams will try to bring their green containers over to the human player and get them loaded with a piece of litter. A litter placed in a scored recycling container is worth six more points. Some teams will choose to get their totes directly from the human player station. These teams will still try to take those totes to a scoring platform and cap them off with a green container. Up until the last 20 seconds, teams will be throwing litter across the field to try to score four extra points for their alliance. After the match, our referees will tally the score. Average score is the only thing that counts in Recycle Rush. That's how these teams will be ranked throughout the tournament. Good luck, we'll see you on Saturday. Thanks, George, for that walkthrough. Now that we have an understanding of the rules of the game, we're gonna talk a little bit about the strategies that we've seen bubbling up to the top. You know, one of the biggest strategies that I've seen is the robots that kind of line up against the human player station and load the containers from that way. They line up their robot perfectly, the human player lifts up the gate, and the containers just go in and they start making those stacks and they just carry that stacks over to the scoring zones and they're just making stacks left and right. Yeah, well, we're seeing the top teams do that, but then we're also seeing teams work in the landfill. We've got Shark Attack, who pretty much exclusively work from the landfill, mm -hmm. and they're right there in the top five. They were seated number one in South Florida two weeks ago, and they're continuing on that train. The other thing that they're doing that we don't see a whole lot of from the teams that work in the landfill as quick is they're working the containers. They can put containers up really fast. Mm -hmm. And their human player is just crazy throwing that. Oh, yeah. the <laughs> throwing the noodles. I know I uh, after the game was announced, after kickoff, I tried throwing that noodle, and I think it went about you know, four or five feet, nothing far at all. And I was like, no, yeah. I would not be a good human I tr player. I tried also, and it seems like it's more like throwing a paper airplane rather than throwing oh, yeah. a football. Mm -hmm. uh, and the points matter. I mean, we're seeing teams here who can score 30 points mm -hmm. just on their human player alone. Some of the robots can't even score that. Mm -hmm. But then you see teams like 1251 Tech Tigers, right? They are so good at putting those containers up. They just haven't gotten themselves on alliances that can make the stacks for them to cap off. Yeah, well, because that's the thing is, you can stack as much as you want, but if you don't have that container, it's not worth anything. Because yeah, the, the time it takes, I mean, if it's four, five wide on the deck, it's worth 10 points. If it's five high, it's worth 10 points until you <laughs> put that container on. I know. That's also one of the things I was noticing. Some teams actually can control 
two containers at once. I know we talked about Shark Attack before. They can actually pick up two containers on their robot. And so they kind of do a stack of two and leave it be and then go deal with the container while their alliance partners work with those two stacks that they just made. Yeah, we're seeing a lot yeah. of different strategies play out. One of the teams that's been doing really well is Team 1902. We actually went out and visited them before they shipped and learned a little bit about the team and the robot. Let's take a look at what we learned. Hey guys, this is Anderson Perkins with the Orlando Robo Show. I'm here with Philip Parker from Team 1902 Exploding Bacon. Philip, how are you doing today? I'm uh, doing pretty good today. And uh, what are some significant changes for you and your team this year as opposed to when we last saw you at the Orlando Regional? Well, we've had some big changes, like we have a new spacious build space, and uh, this year is our 10th anniversary, so. Oh wow, congratulations for you guys. What are some things you all are planning on doing differently since it's your 10th anniversary? Well, we're going to have a birthday party at the Orlando Regional, and then we're going to have a different logo on our shirts, and we're actually going to be selling shirts that have the same anniversary logo without the sponsors on the back of them. So. All right, and Philip, what are some of your strategies this year for the game? We, uh, we decided that we were going to play an inbounder position we are going to stack the totes at the inbounder station and drive them to the scoring platform. And uh, that's that's the basic. And Philip, can you actually walk us through a little bit some of your basic robot design? Yeah. So at the very front of our robot, we have two independently moving uh, intake manipulators. And so these are powered just by using a pulley and two bangbot wheels. And then when we move a little bit further away from the front of the robot, we have our ratcheting elevator. And so this just moves down and it will ratchet onto the edges of the totes. And um, then if we move a little bit further back, we have our imaginary ramp here with our roller at the very bottom, which spins at 1400 RPMs that just brings the tote all the way down to where we can ratchet onto it using the clips. All right, Philip, thank you so much for your time with us today. We wish the best of luck to you and your team this season. And now we're going to go spend some time with Sarah Parker to go over some of Exploding Bacon's outreach activities. And we're here with Sarah Parker now, one of the team's co-presidents and non-engineering student leads. Sarah, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Now, Sarah, as I come to understand it, you're working on the chairman submission this year. How's that going? Are you stressed yet? I'm always stressed, but it's going very well. We've had a lot of good content come out of all of our students, and I'm very excited to see where our efforts will put us this year. But all in all, we've had fun, and we've had a great chance to reflect upon our season and all the things that we've helped our community do. This year, we started something new, and we're very excited about it. It's called Spark. And SPARK is our international outreach for STEM education. And what it is is it's a, um, a program that we've developed that sends kits of reusable materials that teach science experiments and problem solving skills to children all around the world. And these kits include experiments that are relevant to problems in third world countries um, and teaching them about heat absorption and simple machines, things that they'll use in everyday life. Now, Sarah, if some of our viewers wanted to know a little bit more about this program, where might you direct them? We have our own website called sparkimagination.org. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for your time, and we wish the best of luck to you and your team and your initiatives. Back to you guys. Well, Exploding Bacon, they've already had a successful season. Competing a couple weeks ago at the South Georgia Classic, they actually won the Chairman's Award and already have their bid to the World Championship. That's all we've got for today. Uh, make sure you go and tune in tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time. Where we're going to go live on the air and cover the entire playoff matches. Also, check us out at theroboshow.net. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media. For Twitter, it's RoboShowLive, R-O-B-O-S-H-O-W-L-I-V-E. And if you love Snapchat like us, follow us on Snapchat, The Robo Show. So T-H-E-R-O-B-O-S-H-O-W. And with that, I'm Janelle Greger. I'm Andrew. We'll see you tomorrow.